Hello. You might be thinking my car has gotten much larger and seemingly more room-like today. Hmm. Very odd what this manifesting stuff can do for you. Joking, we're in my office. Yeah, unfortunately I um, don't have a car video here for you today. I've got an office video. I just happen to be in my office. Um, the irony being that I actually think I get better sound uh, in my car than in my office. Anywho, let's cut to it, shall we? We've got a couple minutes. Um, what I wanted to discuss with you today is something that I've noticed a lot in my own life and probably pertains to your life as well to some significant degree because it pertains to most people <laughs> you're going to encounter to some significant degree. And that is um, something I, I touched upon a little bit in the last video, which is that our imagination, to uh, sound super formal about it, is fucking quick. Our imagination is quick. It's like you close your eyes and like, what comes to mind right away? Like that's your imagination. That's your thinking, right? Your thinking is your imagination, at least in some significant big picture way. And your thinking is fast. What, what is it that you naturally are thinking during today? Like what naturally comes up for you? Is it predominantly, you know, good thoughts or negative thoughts? And if we're being honest with ourselves, I think we will discover that many of us have far more negative thoughts throughout the day um, than we would care to admit. You know, many, many more negative thoughts than we would care to admit. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of like something that Neville talked about and that I, you know, I edited that short guide years ago called The Wealth Mindset, which is just a series of a couple lectures I think he did in 1953. And, um, you know, he, he says in, in those lectures, he's like, you know, we would be shocked, really shocked if, if we, if other people spoke to us the way that we speak to ourselves or think about ourselves and think, think of ourselves throughout the day. The thoughts that we have of ourselves are far less kindly than we usually admit. And the uh, implementation of all these different tools is basically just to reset or, you know, guide us in a new, better, more positive direction than the stream of shit that many of us seem to be thinking <laughs> throughout the day. And I'm no different than you. You know, I mean, negative thoughts come into my mind so seemingly quickly. And I think that a lot of this practice is just acknowledging that and then figuring out a way to make it so that those negative thoughts don't come as often and that, and that when they do come, they don't linger for as long. And we start to truly think more positively and feel more positive. And one thing I've discovered implementing these principles in my life over like the last eight, nine, ten years at this point, I guess nine years at this point, um, is that when I got into law of attraction principles, law of assumption principles back, yeah, like the end of 2013, I thought I had much less control over my thinking and my day-to-day -day reaction to things than I now believe. The law of attraction, the law of assumption, manifesting principles, whatever the heck you want to call it, have showed me that I have a much larger degree of control and choice over how I respond to things, about how I think about things during the day than I used to believe. And I think a big issue for me is that, you know, I was exposed to these phenomenally interesting uh, mystical and Buddhist, you know, Zen spiritual ideas when I was relatively young, you know, still a teenager. And a lot of that stuff is very, very far out there. And, um, you know, you throw in a healthy mix of, you know, <laughs> counterculture upbringing and living 
you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, basically, psychedelic drugs specifically, and you, you know, if you're, look at, you know, culture and, you know, people like that, artists, musicians, as, as role models, there's so many tragic figures, and, and it seems like the artist or like the artistic sensibility is like, I don't have control, I don't have control. And so that not having control, that idea of not having control, not just like a deep way, not just like deep philosophical questions of free will, but like day to day, feeling almost powerless about how you emotionally react to things. I was, you know, I inoculate, I, 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 I rather I allowed that into my life and drank that stuff up when I was young, when I was a teenager. And a lot of the great Zen spirituality stuff I got into when I was, you know, like in college and then in my 20s, um, as powerful as it was, it it didn't make me feel like I had that degree of control that I really wanted as much as it could have. Um, you know, again, when we get deep, we could say, oh, you know, we don't really have free will. We don't really have control over anything we have to just you know go into the river and let the river take us where it may but the pragmatic reality of life of day-to-day -day living is such that you do have control over <laughs> most of the things that are happening in your life in regards to how you respond to things in regards to how you treat how how you react to your culture you know um you don't have to feel so weak and it, you know incapable of, of changing if you want to change you know it's very possible to change and to get more positive and to get more um you know effectively communicative with people uh it's it's much more possible to feel better and to do things that make you feel better and more relaxed as you go through your day and to put a priority on that, it's much easier to do that than I thought it was when I was a teenager and in my 20s. I mean, I was fucking stupid looking back at it now. I didn't know any better. I didn't know an alternative. I didn't know about a lot of this stuff. And I learned a lot from, you know, being into artistic stuff and psychedelic drugs when I was a teenager and being into Zen spirituality. I'm very, very grateful to have gotten into that stuff. And I'm very grateful to have gotten into that stuff then and not LOA stuff. Because LOA stuff, as we always talk about, it has so much horseshit involved. You know, um, there's horseshit and Zen and Buddhism and all that stuff too, but it's much, uh, much more well intended horseshit than, uh, LOA horseshit, which is, uh, as we often talk about, toxic. Um, but you have more control and you choose what you're thinking on a practical level as you go through your day. You have a choice in the matter much more than you probably expect. And I remind myself of this constantly because it's something I'm always working on. You know, it's very easy for me to fall into some kind of a victim mentality, even after almost a decade of applying these principles, you know, oh, things are hard today. You know, I got so much to do, da, 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 da. I think that's something that we, that all of us fall into from time to time. And I like these principles because it helps me remind myself that, you know what, you don't have to be a victim here. You can lead yourself, you know, and you can use your sense of, uh, you know, inner peace and inner power to transform things for yourself as you go through the day. And it's not a highfalutin practice. It's more like this is just how I can feel better and get more things to go my way and to help more people and to be a better human being for other people and follow the golden rule more effectively today if I choose wisely. Do you know? This is the underrated forgotten stuff that gets blown over all the time. And so I decided to uh, make this office video instead of car video to remind you today. If you have any questions, if you wanna to talk to somebody about this stuff, because it's very helpful to talk to people about this stuff and just to be you know, face to face actually speaking to someone about it is um, something most of us don't get to experience. It's very powerful. 
If you want to talk to me, RadicalCounselor.com. There's more information there. Hope this was helpful. Talk again soon.